must think I'm so stupid, don't you? Like I have no idea what kind of game you're playing. Well, I know exactly what game you're playing. It's the Outhouse Home Game! Play a series favorites, Luce, Ida, King, Willow, Gus, Amity, Hunter, Bellos, and the always fun and attractive Booty. As you venture across the boiling aisles, completing arcs and tasks on your path to becoming a better and bolder you! Learn spells, conquer obstacles, find love, and reach your character apex before your opponents do! Kids will love it, families will adore it, and collectors will treasure it! The Outhouse Home Game! It's a spell of a good time! Satisfaction guaranteed, Season 3 not included. Okay guys, I say this without a hint of sarcasm. The Collector is hands down the scariest character in the Owl House. I mean, on the surface he looks like an omnipotent cosplay babu and you just want to pinch his immortal little cheeks. But then you take a step back and realize that this is a child with god powers and no parents. Look, you guys don't understand. Kids with no supervision are gonna do whatever the heck they want. It's hard enough for parents to stop kids from swinging around knives or playing with matches or drinking drain cleaner, but imagine what a kid with the powers of a cosmic deity and complete freedom is gonna be capable of doing. You slip the infinity gauntlet on little Jimmy? Bam, great job, now you're jello. However, it's this whole aesthetic that makes the collector such an interesting end game antagonist. This little guy is gonna do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, if he thinks it'll be fun. He can flick you like a fly off his shoulder if he's just done with your junk, and from what we know, there's no clear cut way to defeat him, aside from tricking him and putting him in another one of them moon tiles. Unless maybe he can be befriended and reasoned with, which I'd personally prefer since he doesn't seem like a bad kid, but we'll get to that later. For now though, I want to talk about the biggest question that I want answered in the Owl House Season 3. What game are the Collector and King actually going to play? What is the Owl House game going to be? I mean, King just made it up on the spot so this adolescent deity would rescue his buddies, but now that he's been pinky pulled into the endless void of playtime, he's going to need to explain the rules and come up with a solid idea if the Collector is going to trust him any further. Well, I've got a wild imagination and nothing but time, so in this video, I'm going to try and determine what this Owl House game is actually going to entail. What we already know, what the rules might be, what's the aesthetic, all that good stuff. If you guys have any ideas on what King and Collector might be cooking up, or just thoughts on the character in general, feel free to leave them in the comments below. But for now, sit all your butts down on the floor and I'll do the same. Cause the Collector wants to play a little game. Let us begin. <laughs> Let's start with everything we know about this little King Collector arrangement. We know that they first met up after Kikimura escorted King to the bottom of the chasm where Philip dropped the Collector's tile and it miraculously didn't shatter and instead just snagged on a monster's rib, which is freaking luck beyond luck. Anyway, the collector says that King's Pop is the one that put him in the tile in the first place, so it makes total sense that if a titan put him in there, only a titan can get him out. And after a simple game of pull my finger, the collector is out and about, he turns Bellos into Puritan goop, he swipes right for the moon, make of that what you will, and immediately starts shifting the cosmos so they can start playing their game. Because if they're going to play Owl House, they're going to need an Owl House. His words, not mine. At first, I was a little bit confused, like, wait, how are you going to make an Owl House if you have no idea what an Owl House even is? But I don't think he's actually going to build the house right away. It seems like he's going to convert the universe into raw materials, like some kind of god version of Minecraft, and then construct things accordingly once King explains the rules to him which means all the hopes for the universe rest on King's shoulders. He better come up with a Team Fortress 2 levels of fun game if he's going to keep this kid occupied and satisfied. So what kinds of ideas might he come up with? Well, I've got a couple of my own, so let's go over them. Number one, the ultimate series recap tournament thing. Owl House Edition. Okay, so the first idea that came to mind for an Owl House game was literally the events of the Owl House series as a bunch of small events in a tournament style game. The collector would ask King something like, so what do you do in the Owl House? And King, using his own experiences and the experiences from stories that his friends told him, would recap all the events of the series up to that point, but turn them into fun little games while exaggerating certain things to make them sound more exciting. For example, Escape at the Palace Men would involve players scaling to the top of a towering set of playground equipment while avoiding the deadly squeezes of the 50-foot-tall Turbo Toddlers. 
basically an exaggerated version of King's Little B-plot from that episode. Sense and insensitivity could be a writing contest, but in this case, the characters you put in your story actually come to life and fight everyone else's characters. And you can't just say that your character is super mega invincible or whatever, there needs to be a backstory that explains everything, so you've got to be as imaginative as possible if you want to succeed in battle. Understanding Willow and Hollow Mine can be a game where players need to go inside their own heads and face their most traumatic memories and fears, whatever they may be. Whoever stays in their head the longest without tapping out, wins the game. On top of all this, King would also make sure that each game would test a different type of skill in order to add some variety. Like the Palisman stage would test physical strength, insensitivity would test creative abilities, Hollow Mine would test mental fortitude, etc. You know, just to keep things interesting. As for the tournament structure, I imagine it could play out in one of two ways. There could be a 1 versus 1000 situation where all the residents of the Boiling Isles would face off against the Collector at full power. And in order to win, they'd have to play it smart, using weaknesses like his childlike naivete in order to complete certain rounds. Or the more likely of the two, a 1000 versus 1000 type of game where the Collector would split himself into a thousand or so clones in order to match the number of opposing players, but in doing so, he would also divide his power 1,000 times as well. This would make each of his clones about as powerful as a normal witch, putting him and the residents on equal footing and making it more of a fair game. I'm not gonna lie, the image of a thousand Collector clones competing in these events, laughing and giggling together because they're just having such a great time sounds so freaking adorable. Both teams would compete in back-to-back -back Owl House events, until only one competitor from each team is left standing. Preferably King vs. Collector, but I'm not picky. The final event would be based on King's Tide, and it would involve a literal climb up through the cosmos, where you have to grab onto stars and planets and celestial bodies in order to reach the eclipse at the very top. All the while, a draining spell is sapping you of your life energy. The longer you dilly-dally, the weaker you become, and the harder it will be to reach the top. The first person to make it to the moon, shove it aside, and ring the sun gong is the winner of the tournament! Similar to the Ember Island players from Avatar or the Steven Universe movie from Steven Universe, something like this would provide a perfect in-universe reason to recap our favorite events from the show in a manner that serves the plot. And not only would it be a nostalgic trip down memory lane, but it would just be a really cool way to close out the show, showing how far the series has come while framing our favorite moments as epic games with all the high-octane energy of a grand sporting competition. Also, considering how long it would take for King to explain all the episodes and Collector to set up the game, you can even say that Luce and friends would arrive back on the Boiling Isles just as they're finishing up, meaning they can compete in the tournament as well. Overall, seems like a pretty solid idea to me. In fact, here's a challenge for you guys in the comments. Tell me your favorite Owl House episode, and then create your own tournament-style event that could show up in the Owl House game. We're dealing with a literal godchild here, so anything goes. Be as creative as you want. Number 2! The Void! Except it's the Owl House! So this idea is going to take things in a more abstract direction. The Collector would ask King, So what is an Owl House anyway? And King would go into this very deep and personal speech about what the Owl House means to him. He would say things like, The Owl House is... a special place. It's a house where anything is possible. Where you come in as someone confused, and you walk out as someone new. It's a place where you become what you were always meant to be, even if you didn't realize it at first. But the Collector, being a little kid, takes this to mean that the Owl House is a game where you can literally become whatever you want. Basically a game with no rules and no restrictions. Every kid's dream! He thinks that sounds like the coolest idea ever, so he creates his own plane of existence where you can basically become and do whatever you want just by using your imagination. Think the Void from Wander Over Yonder, except run by this little guy. It would start off as a sea of white nothingness, with King and Collector thinking of a few silly things that become real. But then Collector starts to go a little crazy and unleashes his inner child imagination which as we all know is pretty much limitless. And by the time Luce and company arrive back at the Isles, the white void has been converted into this insane looking cacophony of colors, shapes, and abstract oddities. When they eventually find the collector, he gets excited because now he's got even more players for this brand new game. He starts making them do insane random stuff like, uh, you have to shave a yak while doing a handstand and singing a song backwards. Or you have to chase an angry pig with hair while drinking orange juice and wearing one roller skate. You know, just a kid coming up with random stuff that would make him laugh. 
Okay, so would there be any kind of added conflict, or would it just be this kid unleashing his inner discord until he gets bored? Well, do you remember that bit of Bellos goop that snuck its way onto Hunter before he entered the portal? Remember how it proved its sentience by closing the door to the old shack during the credits? Well, picture this. The Blob is still very much alive, and still has the mindset of King Bellos. It's just very physically handicapped. So it decides to lay low while the group is on Earth, then it follows them to the Boiling Isles once they find a way back, and once it realizes that the Collector has created this realm where you can be whatever you want to be, it waits for the Collector to be out of commission, like maybe he eventually gets tired and takes a nap, as kids do, and then uses the realm of infinite possibilities to shapeshift back into Belos and have one final confrontation with our heroes. Similar to the Amphibia finale, where the girls could create anything they wanted with their god crystal powers, the heroes and villain can create anything they want... In this world of pure imagination... And all the while, the heroes would be desperately trying to wake up the Collector so he can turn this liar's big butt into Salem Witch Slime once again. This one would be less of a structured game, and more of an excuse for the animators and creators to go as nuts as possible for their final few episodes. Having a god create a realm where you can literally do or become anything would open up the doors for as many possibilities as their minds can think of. And of course it would allow for one final showdown with the show's big bad, instead of just having him go out like a chump and that being the end of it. Heck, could you imagine what the pitch for something like this would sound like? Alright guys, we need some creative ideas for our series finale. What you got? Yes! Give this man a raise. Number 3! Owl House D&D! Featuring DM King! This one's pretty straightforward. The Collector would once again ask King what the Owl House game is, but in this case, King is 100% stumped for ideas. He's kind of terrified at the display of power that the Collector just showed off, and also depressed that he may never see Luce and his other friends again. So he can't exactly think creatively at the moment. So instead, he says the following. Uh, well, that's the beauty of it. The Owl House game is completely different for everyone who plays it. Uh, you venture across this awesome world, you meet people, and you find treasures as you go. Uh, the only major rule is that you must always start your adventure at the titular Owl House. King draws a little blueprint for what the Owl House looks like, Collector gets to work on constructing it for their game, and while he works, King quickly tries to write down as many ideas for the game as he possibly can, deciding to make up the rest of it as he goes along. And what ensues is a Dungeons & Dragons type role-playing game, where Collector is the player, the Boiling Owls residents are the player characters and NPCs, and King is the Dungeon Master. The two of them would watch the world from above like they were looking down at a living, breathing game board. King would ask Collector to perform any action of his choosing, and then King would have to come up with a story beat based on what he chooses, which the Collector would then make reality using his powers. But don't forget that the two of them are technically playing with real people as game pieces. This would be a constant balancing act for King, as he tries to make the game exciting to appease the Collector, while also not making it too dangerous because if he does, he could seriously hurt his friends. Similar to the Void idea from before, this D&D concept could make for a lot of creative possibilities. Any manner of bizarre things could pop up. The mood and tone of the story could change at any moment. Locations and characters could be familiar or completely off the wall. The only limit would once again be the duo's imagination. And speaking of the duo, I feel like this story could actually allow for some King and Collector bonding moments. Not only would we get to hear some off-screen banter as King narrates the story and Collector comments on it, but maybe when they take a snack break, or whatever God's equivalent of that is, they could actually get to know each other by talking a little. We could get a little backstory on this god child. Where is he from? What are his likes and dislikes? Where are his parents? King could maybe ask about his own father, since it was his dad who put the Collector in this little moon tile in the first place. Little bit of lore, little bit of conversation, little bit of the duo just chilling as kids. It could be really nice. And the stronger their friendship becomes, the easier it would be for King to convince him to maybe return the Isles back to normal after their game is over. Heck, I'd much rather have King and Collector come to a mutual agreement instead of the poor guy getting trapped in a circle for a thousand more years, but we'll have to see what happens. A pretty simple idea, I know, but I'd give it a nat 20 for creative potential alone. So there you go, a couple of loose ideas for what this mythical Owl House game could entail later on. The sky's the limit when your playmate is the second coming of Cosmic Christ. But overall, what do you guys think? If you were in charge of playing with the Collector, what kind of Owl House game would you come up with? And what did you think of my ideas? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in everybody, and I hope to see you all real soon.